Hey guys, so I've been shopping around for test leads for my multimeter and I decided to go ahead and order the Fluke TLK287 electronics master test lead set. Um, I, I tried to do some research on this before I bought it and I could not find a good consistent listing of what was actually contained in this test lead set. So I figured I would toss a video up here and uh, unbox this and show you guys what it contains. So just for comparison, I've got a Fluke 87.5 here, and uh, then I've got the test leads, the probes, and the silicone test leads that came packaged with that Fluke 87.5, so we'll compare against that. So if we crack this box open, We've got a nice little fluke uh, package here. And it feels like it's made... It looks like it's woven. It feels plastically, plasticky. So I'm guessing that's some kind of woven nylon, maybe. And then some thin plastic pouches on here. So uh, as we go through this, let's start from the bottom. What do we have here? All right. So... This would be the, the mini grabbers, it looks like. So if I expand that, it has the hook style grabber on that. And uh, for comparison of the size on these, well, let's untwist this. So this looks like a relatively short, that's maybe a foot long of lead on these mini grabbers. Comes with a black and a red. And I'm going to assume that I can attach these to the longer silicone leads that came with this test lead kit. And, yep, that seems to be accurate. So, so these mini grabbers can plug onto the generic right-angled test lead cables that came with the lead kit. And uh, let's do some comparison here of that, of that main generic lead. So if I, on the left here, I've got the lead that came with the fluke, and on the right, I've got the lead that came with the test lead kit. So we can see that that lead set that came with the kit is substantially shorter than the leads that came with the fluke. With the fluke multimeter, that is. And that's not a showstopper, it's just a data point. But anyways, we can take, you know, I wonder if after we account for the, the length of the lead on the mini grabber, if these come out to be about equal. Let's try that. So again, the Fluke 87.5's test lead is on the left, and the mini grabber's on the right. And nope, even with the mini grabber clip attached, it still comes up a little bit short. But again, not a showstopper, just a data point. So with these mini grabbers, these were a little bit bigger than I imagined they would be, but I think they're still usable. So here's a random breadboard that I have laying around, and uh, these actually fit really nicely onto just a regular surface mount resistor lead here. So this is your usual 0.1 inch pitch breadboard, and I can definitely go onto that lead and clamp that mini grab around there, that hook works out pretty nicely for that, so cool. So those are the mini grabber clips, the hook style. Gonna break these down and scoot them off to the side. So the next thing that was in that first pouch is a tiny set of probes. Oh, these look pretty sharp. So if we compare those probes against the Fluke 87.5 probes, you can see that they have a much longer exposed surface on the top. And uh, this isn't showing up horribly well, but you can also see that they are far sharper of a tip there. So these are a lot smaller in the body, too, than the stock Fluke 87.5 test leads. So if you compare the length there, 
They're uh, shorter to hold. They feel lighter. They don't have much of a strain relief at the end. There is a little bit of a strain relief. The, uh, the lead cable to it feels a little bit thinner and maybe slightly less durable, but I haven't run into any problems with it so far. Granted, I haven't used them yet. So smaller diameter, a little bit tinier. They feel pretty light and surprisingly small in my hands. So if we look at the leads on these, and this comes with the right angle lead to the meter already attached. So I just poked myself there and uh, definitely noticed that. So if we compare the length of these leads to the length of the leads that came with the 87.5 meter, what do we end up with? So starting at the pointy end, and you can see that uh, that is, again, a substantially shorter lead than the stock leads that came with the 87.5 meter. So that's it for the bottom pouch. I'm going to go ahead and cap these off again before I get stuck again. Where'd the other one go? All right. So the second pouch had contained the generic leads that I'd already attached to the mini grabbers. The third pouch up has a number of things stuffed into it. So we've got some directions and what looks like a warranty card there. And we've got some banana to, uh, to 0.1 inch, what seems to be a 0.1 inch DuPont 1 by 1 female header. So to confirm that, yep, that does seem to mate onto my 0.1 inch headers that I hit on the breadboard. So there you have it, they stick on there. If we look at the, the length of these leads, what's this look like? This feels like it's probably a 24 gauge wire, maybe a 26 gauge. And the length on these guys is, again, substantially shorter than the leads that came with the Fluke 87.5 multimeter. But uh, keeping in mind, this is a electronics test set. That 87.5 meter is kind of sold as a general purpose or maybe even an electrician's test set. So I could see the, uh, the 87.5 users needing maybe a longer reach than the TLK 287 test lead kit users since that was marketed specifically for electronics. And if it's electronics, I'm willing to bet you're probably sitting at a bench and not reaching across machinery. So uh, we're still looking into the, the third pouch on the test lead kit and dumping some stuff out here. So these are the micro grabbers. These are pincher style. I don't know how well you can see that on the camera here. And uh, so we've got two of those, a red one and a black one. They can uh, go ahead and grab onto that capacitor lead okay. And uh, I've got a, a regular, what is this, like a 14-pin dip, 14 dip through-hole mounted uh, integrated circuit package here. So I wonder if I can actually go and grab one of those leads. And, yep, I don't know how well you can see that on the camera, but uh, these micro-grabbers, pincher style, they are able to get in there. I don't know if I trust myself to do this on a live... S whoops, did I just deform... Nope, I did not deform it. Cool. Great, so I can even get in there and latch on to a middle pin on a 14-pin dip surface mount IC. And uh, that's not shorting anything out, so that's great for this sort of work. Um, getting it in there is kind of clumsy, but I'm not exactly a pro at this either, so I, I wouldn't recommend trying this out on a live circuit. So, let's see, for hooking up these micro grabbers, I'm guessing we'd have to go back to those female DuPont connectors. And uh, sure enough, each side of this micro grabber has a little 0.1 inch male pin, 0.1 inch test lead uh, or test header male pin and it looks like that mates 
right down in there with the uh, with those female test leaves that we looked at before. Um, we've got some pointy objects here, and I imagine these are some kinds of leads that can go, or some kind of uh, long long test, uh, what would you call it, long pointy pieces. I don't know what they would go to though. Let's see, is there anything else in the pouch they could go to? I'm going to need to poke around a bit, I think, and figure out what exactly those are intended for, because it's not immediately obvious to me. It doesn't look like there's an easy way to pull the contact off of the test probes, but it definitely does look like it's a probe contact of some kind. So, stay tuned. Might need to come back to that later, but that's a head scratcher for the moment. Um, Similarly, I'm not exactly sure what these leads do either. So there's, they all seem like different points that can go on to a lead, but I don't know, or various points that can go on to a probe, I just have no idea what probe they go on to at the moment. And I am admittedly too lazy to read through the entire instructions here while I'm shooting video. But uh, looks like there's no dead giveaway in the instructions there, so I'll come back to that some other time. Actually, no I won't. I'm, I'm too lazy and unfocused to do that. So you are on your own. Um, here's some test probes that uh, came with the TLK, TLK 287 kit, and they mate right onto those generic silicone leads that we already looked at. No surprises there. Uh, for comparison, when we compare these to the 87.5 test leads. So they're about roughly similar in length. They have strain reliefs. Um, they don't have the rubberized finger guard near the tip. They do have longer uh, contact area on the tip. They do have the, uh, the flattened circle on the finger guard to help reduce rolling. And uh, they feel a little bit more plasticky than the uh, leads that came with the 87.5, but I'm sure they'll get the job done. So the, by the way, we are onto the fourth pouch now. That's where I found the test probes at. So also in the fourth pouch, we've got some big old alligator clips that got tossed in there. And again, these mate with the generic silicone test leads that came with the TLK 287 and these guys are surprisingly bulky for electronics work um, so going back we can use them to grab onto a resistor these are definitely too big to get into a 0.1 inch header pin or and far far too large to even imagine doing anything with that dip package but they are there, and they are alligator clippy. I wonder how uh, how well these hang on to, hang on to stuff. So um, could definitely give that a little bit of a tug. It's not going anywhere. It's not like the Sure Grip that came with the 280 set or with the uh, Fluke 87.5 multimeter though. This guy is a beast, but this is definitely meant for straight up electrical work, not electronics work. So it's in there. And also in that fourth pouch, we have some big old spades. And these plug onto the gen generic silicone test lead. And uh, these are pretty large diameter. I, but they are tapered too, so maybe you could use it on a variety of lug terminal sizes. So for comparison, just in size and shape, um, they roughly fit around the, the uh, positive terminal on a 9 volt battery, just to give you a, a sense of size. And then finally, last but not least, um, these seem to be generic banana adapters that were in that fourth pouch. So if I go and jam this down into the silicone test lead, 
then I can go and let's see that's not very interesting I can go and ah there we go so if I need to use, if I need to lengthen the probes that came with this for example I could mate the probe lead to the generic silicone test lead that came with it and I suspect that would now make it far far longer than the Fluke 875's test lead so as we stretch that out gets all knotted but we can uh, keep stretching that and now with the extension the TLK 287 probe leads are definitely longer than the stock Fluke 875 test leads so if we go back and run through all of this stuff and look at the specs here let me make sure I've got the right cables that I'm talking about So the silicone test leads are Fluke branded and they are rated 10 amps, 1000 volt cat 3, 600 volt cat 4 and they are CE marked. The banana to banana connectors are no brand but they have a CE mark. They're rated 1000 volt cat 3, 600 volt cat 4. The spades have no markings whatsoever. The big old alligator clips are fluke branded. They have a CE mark. They are rated 10 amps, 1000 volt cat 2, 600 volt cat 3. The micro grabbers have no markings on them whatsoever. And these tiny electronic probes are fluke branded, CE marked, 3 amps, category 2, 1000 volts. The, oh, interestingly, so these uh, banana test leads with the 0.1 inch pitch uh, female DuPont headers, these are actually Pomona branded. I think I remember hearing some kind of uh, talk a while back that Fluke acquired Pomona and there is what seems to be a part number stamped on here but the ink is saturated and not very legible but uh, if I try to make it out I think it says and I'm not certain I think it says 4771-24- either D or 0 the the mini grabber, the hook leads, these are fluke branded and there's not much by way of additional markings on there beyond the, the fluke branding. Then the test probes are fluke branded, 1000 volts, category 2, 10 amps. And I believe We've now gone through everything in the Fluke TLK-287 Electronics Master test lead set that I received. So, oh hey, looking at the back here. Okay, so the modular test probes are 4 millimeter, four millimeter tip with cap installed. Um, category 3, 1000. You know, that does not look like what I received though. Is this actually accurate? Does this come apart? So, I don't think that this packaging is consistent with what I received. So, this is showing a 4 millimeter tip, and I can believe that's a 4 millimeter tip, but uh, I don't see a cap to install upon them. So, that's an interesting data point. I guess. Uh, it says with cap installed it's category 3 1000 volts category 4 600 volts and then it says standard tip without cap cat 2 1000 volts but there's no cap so I guess this is stuck operating in the category 2 1000 volt mode uh, the precision electronic test probes it says are category 2 1000 volt 3 amp and I believe that's consistent with the, uh, the labeling that we read on them there was no current rating stamped directly onto them, so I guess these are 3 amps. Don't take my word for that, though. 
uh, the modular test leads. All right, nothing else is real. Oh, the micro grabbers we looked at, those had no stampings on them. But the box says that the micro grabbers and micro grabber leads, which I guess would be these DuPont cables, are rated for uh, 30 volts RMS or 60 volts DC 2 amps. And uh, 30 volts effective 60 volt CC 2 amps. Oh, sorry, that must be a uh, foreign language there. So for you English speaking folks, these guys in combination must be 30 volts RMS, 60 volts DC, 2 amps. So uh, there you have it. Um, as always, read the packaging and labels on anything you receive. Uh, use your judgment. We may not receive the exact same thing if you order the same part. And uh, it's always possible that I may have misread something. So be safe. Do your homework. Definitely double check me. And uh, have a nice day. So, as I was cleaning up the mess that I just created, I noticed a couple of things I did not initially notice. On the micro, micro uh, grabbers, um, they do have a marking. I do not recognize the marking, but on the thumb pad that you push on, it has either an H with a bar above it and a circle around everything, or it could be a circle around a mu character with a bar under it, or that could even be a Y with a tail and a circle around it. I don't know what that means. I don't recognize that branding. But uh, So that's the micro grabbers. As far as all of these assorted pointy objects that came in that little baggie, these are different uh, probe tips that go into the precision probes. So, we already looked at the default probe that comes installed in there. That's the pointy one that I stuck myself on. And I, uh, I was kind of nervous about doing this, but I took a pair of Lyman's pliers and uh, grabbed the tip on the precision probe. And sure enough, that tip comes out, and you end up with just a probe with a hollow point in it. And uh, these other probes that were in the baggie, they do fit in there, and I can just go and jam these in. So now you've got a very long lead probe, or a, uh, a very long tipped probe. And once I do that, I, I, I can pull this guy out just using my fingers. Or, let's see, that's the same thing there. So we've got a pair of those. And then these must be the spring-loaded leads. So uh, looks like we've got a pair of spring-loaded leads, and notice they're springy. I can compress them, and the tip of those, the tip of those probe tips goes in. So this is the feature they advertised for helping facilitate contact with tiny surface mount components. So that way, as your hands all shaky and you're trying to hold the probes there, uh, you don't break contact with the device under test. And the tip of these, in particular, is flat. And it looks like these might go into test point holes on a printed circuit board. Actually, this is really... Let me go ahead and uh, flip my magnifying. I'm going to toss it under the magnifier here, which you can't see. But it looks like there might be a very minor horseshoe groove um, made into the very tip of this, maybe to help it sit firmly against um, tiny surface mount package leads. Oh, also I realized that earlier in the video I, I did misspeak. That was not a surface mount resistor on the breadboard. That was definitely a through-hole resistor. And that 14-pin dip definitely was not a surface mount package. Um, that was a through-hole package as well. So, sorry for that brain fart. So we've got the... We have the two spring-loaded probe tips that can either plug into a test uh, test point hole on a printed circuit board or maybe sit up against some really tiny leads on a surface mount package. Um, similarly, it looks like we've got... Okay, so there's three different sets of spring-loaded leads here. These are slightly bigger than the last, and they definitely do have a bit of a fork to the lead on this. It's like a... Uh, 
looks like it has three or four points at the tip of the fork. And again, I imagine those are there to help uh, help sit on surface mount package pins. And they are springy as well. And again, I'm expecting that these just go right into the precision probe, and they do. And they sit down in there, and they kind of stick you in the finger if you touch the tip with your bare hand. So there we go. We've got a springy probe now. And I hope I'm doing this right. I've never done this before. I hope I'm not damaging these tips, and I'm not damaging the probe bodies. Then finally, the third set of springy tips. Um, these look like pretty your pretty standard needle-pointed test probe tips, except they're springy. So the point on these springy things is comparable. Seems to have about the same taper as the uh, the point on the long test tips, and seems to be comparable to the tip on the original rigid tips that came pre-installed on those precision probes. So, uh, so that was a cool breakthrough. Now I know what these extra tips are and how to use them. I really hope I didn't damage anything just by yanking them out of there, but I do not see any sort of obvious release mechanism or anything to loosen up to install these, so for now I'm going with the assumption that these tips are just friction fit into the precision probe handles. So, uh, thanks for watching.